the McCullough effect. Stare at red and green stripes for a few minutes, then look at black and white ones. Suddenly, they look tinted, peakish, greenish, just wrong. You blink, look away, rub your eyes. Still there. The colors aren't real, but your brain insists they are. This glitch doesn't come from your eyes. It's happening in your brain. When you stare at colored stripes for long enough, your brain starts linking the color with the orientation of the lines. So red might get tied to horizontal, green to vertical. Once the color is removed, your brain still expects it and fills it in, even though it's not there. Unlike most optical illusions, this one can stick. The effect can last for hours. In some cases, people have reported seeing the false colors for days. It's a simple trick with weirdly long-lasting consequences, and it shows how much your brain is not just seeing the world, but actively interpreting, predicting, and sometimes flat-out guessing. Capra's Delusion Imagine seeing someone you love, your partner or your sibling, and being completely convinced they are an imposter. They look like your partner, sound like your sibling, but they feel wrong. Your brain whispers, imposter. This strange experience happens when the brain recognizes a familiar face, but the emotional connection doesn't kick in. The result? Your mind fills the gap with paranoia. This is definitely not Jake. Oh damn, it's someone from the IRS. It's often linked to brain injuries, dementia, or certain psychiatric conditions. The part of the brain that processes faces still works, but the part that connects those faces to emotion misfires. So the person feels like a stranger wearing a perfect mask. It's one of the most unsettling psychological glitches out there. Because if you can't trust your senses of who people are, what else can you trust? Mandela Effect You know the Monopoly guy, right? Fancy suit, top hat, monocle. Except he never actually had a monocle. Or how about the Fruit of the Loom logo? You remember it clearly. A bunch of fruit spilling out of a basket, right? Well, the basket never existed. I know, you will never forget this day. This phenomenon is called the Mandela Effect. When thousands, sometimes millions of people clearly remember something a certain way, but reality disagrees. The Mandela Effect got its name because tons of people vividly recall Nelson Mandela dying in prison back in the 80s. But here's the twist. He didn't. Mandela was alive and well, and even became South Africa's president years later. So how can millions of brains all make the exact same mistake? Turns out, your memory isn't a perfect recording of what actually happened. Instead, your brain constantly reconstructs memories from small fragments, filling in the missing parts with assumptions, guesses, and even things you've heard from others. This can leave you with vivid but totally false memories. And now, with the internet, these mistaken memories spread quickly, making millions of us wonder if reality itself somehow changed overnight. So next time you're absolutely sure Darth Vader said, Luke, I am your father, just remember, he never said it exactly like that. Either reality's trolling us, or we're all collectively terrible at paying attention. The Truman Show Delusion Ever get the feeling that someone's watching you? Not in a creepy way, but like your entire life is being observed. That maybe your friends are actors, your job is a set, and everything's just a little too scripted. For most people, it's a passing thought. But for some, it turns into a full-blown belief. They become convinced their life is a staged reality show, filmed 24-7 with hidden cameras and scripted interactions. Some even start acting like the star of the show watching for cameras, testing people to see if they're in on it, or trying to escape what they believe is a fake world. It might sound bizarre, but it's a documented psychological phenomenon, and in a world filled with surveillance, social media, and constant digital exposure, the idea doesn't feel as far-fetched as it used to. Even if you don't fully believe it, the thought can still sneak in. What if I'm not paranoid? What if I'm just the last person to notice the script? Bader Meinhof phenomenon. You learn a new word, let's say kerfuffle. You've never heard it before, but now it's everywhere. It's in your feed, someone uses it in the group chat, and suddenly your favorite podcast drops it mid sentence. 
Did the whole world agree to use it today, or is something messing with your brain? It feels like reality just flipped a switch. But the truth is, that word was always there. You just hadn't noticed it until your brain decided it mattered. Your mind acts like a spotlight. The second something new catches your attention, whether it's a weird word, a car model, or a niche topic, it jumps to the top of your mental watch list. Suddenly, you start noticing it everywhere. It's not magic or a secret message from the universe. It's just how attention works. Once something lands on your radar, your brain starts flagging it, making it feel like the world changed, even though it didn't. Zame Vu You're writing your name, something you've done a thousand times, when suddenly it looks wrong, like it's spelled in a language you don't speak, or you walk into the kitchen and forget where you keep the cups, even though they've been in the same spot for 15 years. That's Zame Vu the opposite of deja vu. Instead of something new feeling familiar, something familiar suddenly feels weirdly foreign, like your brain forgot to load reality correctly. But what's actually happening in your brain? Scientists suggest it's essentially a temporary glitch. Your mind becomes fatigued or overstimulated and briefly loses its grip on ordinary details. It's like your brain accidentally hits reset, forcing you to relearn something basic like how your own name sounds. Don't panic. It's not a sign you're broken. It's just your brain briefly saying, wait, have we met before? Then it usually snaps back. Usually. Cognitive dissonance. You tell people you're trying to save money, but you keep ordering takeout four times a week. You say you value sleep, but somehow end up watching this video at 2 a.m. That tension you feel, that's cognitive dissonance, when your actions and beliefs don't match, and your brain works overtime to make it make sense, or at least tries to. We all like to think we're consistent, logical people, but when behavior clashes with values, your brain gets uncomfortable. Instead of changing the behavior, it often tweaks the belief to reduce the guilt. Skip the gym? Rest is a part of the process. Bought something dumb. I earned it. Ate half the cake. Well, at least it wasn't the whole thing. It's not lying, it's self-preservation. Your mind wants to protect your identity, and when something threatens that image, it jumps into excuse-making mode. Lucid dreaming. You're in a dream, back in school, sitting in an exam you didn't study for. And it's in Spanish. You only know two words, una curveza, until you suddenly realize, wait a minute, I'm not even in school anymore. And just like that, the fear fades. You flip the desk, fly through the ceiling, and wake up hugging a pillow. Okay, maybe not exactly like that. Lucid dreaming is when you suddenly become aware you're dreaming, and sometimes you get to take full control. It usually happens when something in the dream feels just a little too weird like a broken phone screen still working, or someone speaking in slow motion. Your brain catches the glitch and goes, what is that? From there, some people gain full control, flying through cities, breathing underwater, or creating entire worlds from scratch. Lucid dreams can happen randomly, but many people actually train for them using techniques like reality checks, dream journals, or waking up during certain sleep cycles. Scientists think it happens when the part of your brain responsible for self-awareness lights up mid-dream. Basically, you're half awake inside the dream world. Time dilation. That Zoom meeting? 15 minutes. Felt like a week. Your last gaming session? 3 hours. Felt like 10 minutes. Same clock, totally different experience. What's going on? This is known as time dilation, when your perception of time stretches or shrinks depending on what's happening. Your brain doesn't experience time like a stopwatch. It measures it based on attention, emotion, and memory. The more intense or unfamiliar something is, the longer it feels. That's why childhood summers felt endless. Your brain was constantly processing new stuff. But as an adult, when days blur into routines, time seems to fly. Emotion plays a big role too. Moments of fear or stress, like nearly getting hit by a car, can feel frozen in slow motion. That's your brain going into hyper-awareness, 
recording every detail. On the flip side, when you're relaxed and focused, like getting lost in a hobby or a good conversation, time collapses. The clock doesn't lie, but your brain constantly distorts it. It bends time to match how you feel, what you notice, and whether your brain thinks the moment is worth remembering. Reality stays on schedule. You don't. There's also one more time glitch you definitely experienced. Missing time. You check the clock. It's 2.15 p.m. You answer one quick message, zone out for a second, and suddenly it's 3.40. Wait, what? Where did the hour go? You weren't asleep. You didn't do anything useful, and yet time just vanished. It happens more often than you think. While driving a familiar route, walking through a grocery store, or scrolling endlessly on your phone, you snap back into awareness and realize, I don't remember a single thing I just did. So what's going on? Your brain has a habit of switching to autopilot during repetitive or low stimulation moments. It stops actively recording because, well, there's nothing interesting to remember. And without those mental bookmarks, the time just disappears. It's not supernatural, and no, aliens probably didn't beam you up. It's just your brain going into energy-saving mode. But the result feels eerie, like a chunk of your life was quietly edited out. You didn't lose that hour, you just lived it on autopilot, and your brain didn't think it was worth remembering. Repeating dreams. You're falling, or running late, or being chased by someone and can't unlock the front door. Then it happens again. And again, same dream, different night. Why? Repeating dreams aren't random. They're your brain stuck on something it hasn't worked out yet. It keeps hitting replay until you finally notice. But why does your mind keep recycling the same weird scenario? Psychologists think it happens when you're stressed, anxious, or avoiding a problem in real life. Your subconscious is trying to get your attention, nudging you again and again until you deal with whatever you're ignoring. Here's the strange part. Once you figure out what's behind the dream, it usually stops. Like your brain just wanted to be heard. So next time you're stuck in a loop of the same dream, ask yourself, what's bothering me right now? Maybe it's stress, a tough decision, or something you've been avoiding. Figuring it out might be the key to ending the cycle and finally giving your brain something new to work with. Let's be real. Both you and your mind are probably sick of the reruns. Synchronicities. Ever been thinking about pizza and suddenly your phone buzzes with a promo for half price pepperoni? Or maybe you brag to a friend that you've never gotten a speeding ticket, and five minutes later, flashing lights appear in your rear view mirror. Thanks a lot, universe. These aren't just random coincidences. They're moments so weirdly specific, it's like life itself is listening in on your conversations. These strangely meaningful moments are called synchronicities. Those no-way experiences that make you look around suspiciously and wonder, is the universe trolling me right now? So what's really going on here? Psychologist Carl Jung described synchronicity as two completely unrelated events suddenly connecting in a deeply personal way. Like when you're debating quitting your awful job, and at that exact moment, your Uber driver casually says quitting theirs was the best decision they've ever made. Or you're thinking about a friend, and boom, they text you immediately, as if summoned. The craziest part is that there's no single proven explanation for synchronicities, just fascinating theories. Is it your subconscious guiding you? Your brain recognizing patterns? Or reality itself dropping subtle hints? No one knows for sure. Semantic satiation. Say the word door out loud. Now say it again, and again and again. After about 10 to 15 times, it starts to feel wrong, like your neurons just gave up. What's happening isn't a language breakdown, it's your brain glitching. The neurons that connect sound to meaning get overstimulated and briefly stop responding. You know what the word means, but it suddenly feels like nonsense. This can happen with any word, even your own name, and when it does, it's surprisingly unsettling. Something familiar turns foreign in seconds. What makes it so weird is how fragile meaning actually is. Words feel automatic, but that's only because your brain agrees to keep the connection alive. 
repeat one too many times and the illusion slips just long enough to remind you reality only works if your brain keeps playing along. Manifestation. You keep visualizing getting a new job, imagining the office, the people, your first paycheck, and even what you'll wear on the first day. Then, out of nowhere, a friend sends you a job opening that's weirdly perfect. You weren't even actively applying yet, but there it is. That's manifestation, the idea that your focused thoughts and intentions can create real-world outcomes. Unlike synchronicity, where something unexpected lines up with your thoughts out of the blue, manifestation is intentional. You're not just noticing a pattern, you're aiming for a specific result. People use it to try to attract jobs, relationships, money, opportunities. But is it magic? Not exactly. Psychologists say that when you focus on something intensely, whether it's a goal, an object, or an outcome, you start acting differently. You notice more related opportunities, make faster decisions, and align your behavior with your goal without even realizing it. The result? Things feel like they fall into place. But maybe it's not the universe handing you what you want. It's you tuning your mind to finally see and grab it. What are your thoughts about manifestation? Bystander effect. Ever seen someone trip or drop their stuff in public, and everyone just freezes, awkwardly, pretending they didn't see it? You might think people are just rude, but this weird glitch in human behavior isn't just rudeness. It's wired into us. Here's the deal. Responsibility doesn't multiply in a crowd. It splits. The more people around, the less likely anyone is to do anything. Sounds backwards, right? It all comes down to something psychologists call diffusion of responsibility. Your brain quietly assumes someone else already jumped in. Or maybe someone else is just more qualified to help. And since we're all wired to look for social cues, if nobody else looks panicked, your brain goes, guess it's fine. But this hesitation can backfire fast. Small problems can turn into full-blown disasters while everyone just stands there blinking. So next time you see someone in trouble, don't wait for a sign from the universe. Be the one who moves. Odds are, once you step in, the crowd will follow. Just don't let your brain trick you into being background noise. To learn about the misconceptions you probably still believe, watch the video on the left. If you want to check out my second channel, click on this logo on the right. Thank you.